Now, the term underrated is thrown around a lot within the wrestling fandom. What qualifies a wrestler for being underrated though? Is it a lack of appreciation from fans or is it a lack of respect and subsequent push from WWE themselves? Every fan will have different qualifying metrics in terms of what makes a talent underrated, but the most common consensus is that an underrated wrestler is a talent who never got their flowers from WWE during their time in the company, and this talent has in later years become a fan favourite. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the most underrated wrestlers in WWE history. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and a non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10. Shelton Benjamin and one of the standout tag teams of the Ruthless Aggression Era in WWE was the world's greatest tag team. Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas were two tremendous wrestlers, but it was Benjamin who stood out. Benjamin would begin a solo career in 2004, and for the longest time, it looked like Benjamin was destined to be a future WWE Champion. He would secure major victories over the likes of Triple H, Ric Flair and Chris Jericho, but WWE failed to effectively pull the trigger on him. As Benjamin's career went on, he was solidified as a mid-card talent and was often used in Money in the Bank matches as a human highlight reel. Benjamin continues to have a ton of support and love to this very day, and even though he seems destined to wrestle on WWE main event for the rest of his career, there is still hope that Triple H will finally give the former IC champion and US champion the push he so deserves. Number 9. John Morrison John Morrison's work throughout his wrestling career has always been appreciated by fans. Morrison is without question one of the most athletic wrestlers to ever grace a WWE ring, and Morrison can do some insane things with his body. Morrison did receive a decent push during his numerous runs in WWE, his 2009 push was certainly a highlight, and this was when it was rumoured that Morrison was going to ascend into the main event scene in WWE. The crowd at this point in time were firmly behind him, and this was cemented when Morrison was cheered over Rey Mysterio in an IC match on SmackDown. In late 2010, the crowd were fully on board with Morrison becoming WWE Champion, and he would even win a number one contenders match to face former tag partner and then WWE Champion The Miz. This match would happen on Raw in early 2011, and it was a match of the year contender. Morrison was never the same following his unsuccessful attempt to win the title in 2011, and it was clear that WWE had no plans whatsoever to give the underrated star a run with WWE's top prize. Number 8. Baron Corbin One of the most criticised wrestlers of the modern era is Baron Corbin. Corbin is criticised for being boring in the ring and pushed beyond his abilities. However, Corbin is one of the more underrated stars in the locker room. Corbin is safe, reliable and is someone who can deliver exceptional character work. This was seen when Corbin performed his Broken Corbin character. This showed that Corbin had a ton of range as a wrestler and had the ability to break away from his established persona. A number of wrestlers have spoken out about just how good Corbin is, and these include names such as The Rock and Randy Orton. There is a reason that WWE continues to keep Corbin in a featured role, and this is unlikely to ever change. Number 7. Cesaro but Throughout Cesaro's run in WWE, he was often labelled as underrated by fans. This was because WWE failed to see Cesaro as a main event talent. Former WWE Chairman Vince McMahon would even appear on Stone Cold's podcast in 2014 and outright declared that Cesaro doesn't have the it factor. Cesaro received a number of pushes throughout his career, but during those pushes, WWE had no concrete plans to make him world champion. Fans like to place Cesaro on the list of names that should have been world champion, and it's hard to argue. Cesaro received his biggest push to date in 2021 when he defeated Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 37 and main event the WrestleMania Backlash event against Roman Reigns. Although there were calls for Cesaro to win this major match, WWE had other ideas. Cesaro now finds himself in AEW where he hopes that the company will present him in a manner fitting for his extensive talent. Number 6. Shane Hurricane Helms Shane Helms landed on WWE television in 2001 with a colourful hurricane persona. When the character first debuted, fans were critical, and there were questions surrounding on how on earth a superhero character was going to work in 2001. If this was the new generation era, it would have been fine, but this was an edgy product that WWE were presenting. Thankfully, Shane Hurricane Helms proved everyone wrong. The character became immensely popular, especially with the younger demographic, and the Hurricane subsequently became one of the most beloved characters on the show. 
In 2003, The Rock would even work with The Hurricane in one of his final TV programs before semi-retirement. This was a huge deal and showed how much someone as iconic as The Rock valued The Hurricane's work. Although Hurricane never won the big one in WWE, his body of work is vastly underrated and should be a template on how to make a character work. Number 5. Xavier Woods The New Day are one of the most celebrated stables of all time, yet Biggie and Kofi Kingston seem to get the majority of the praise. This is likely due to the WWE favoring the two aforementioned talents over Xavier Woods. Biggie and Kingston have both won the WWE titles during the New Day's tenure. Woods has won the King of the Ring, but this sadly didn't lead to anything substantial. Woods is a tremendous athlete, talker, and storyteller. He has the inerrant ability to deliver hilarious comedic material, then seconds later switches focus into selling a match with passion and integrity. New Day member Kingston discussed just how underrated Woods is during an interview with Sports Kida. He stated, He's very underrated, number one, incredibly underrated. I don't think people understand that his wrestling mind is legit top-notch. Having conversations with him and talking about matches and ideas, top-notch wrestling mind for sure. The New Day doesn't happen if Xavier Woods doesn't have the idea, culminating that you know that the big old cauldron that he calls his brain. Number 4. Umaga When Umaga first debuted in 2006, fans were skeptical. There were concerns that Umaga was just another generic super heavyweight who would fail to have entertaining matches, but Umaga proved everyone wrong. Whilst he had tropes of an old-school super heavyweight, his in-ring work was perfect for the Ruthless Aggression era, meaning that he could have excellent matches with everyone up and down the card. Umaga had acclaimed matches with the likes of Triple H and Jeff Hardy, and his last man standing match against John Cena at the 2007 Rumble is an all-time classic. There were arguments to be made, especially in 2007, that Umaga should have won the title, and it was hard to argue with anyone who had this viewpoint. Umaga's work was just that damn good. He sadly passed away in 2009, but his memory lives on and there is a consistent push from fans to see Umaga take his rightful place in the WWE Hall of Fame. Number 3. Sheamus Sheamus is a wrestler who, until recently, has never given the respect and admiration he deserved. Debuting in 2009, Sheamus has constantly been great in the ring for over a decade. Unfortunately, his early ascension to the main event scene in WWE resulted in a number of fans turning against him. While Sheamus' WWE title win just months after debuting was questionable, this didn't take away from the bodywork that followed in later years. Sheamus has had phenomenal matches with everyone including the likes of Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, Roman Reigns and even The Big Show. 2022 was truly the year where fan reception to the former WWE Champion turned around. Fans eventually realized that Sheamus was underrated in everything he did and he was one of the most dependable wrestlers in the entire company. Number 2. William Regal What makes up the perfect pro wrestler? Is it someone's in-ring ability? Is it charisma? Or is it a combination of all factors that are needed to become a successful WWE star? William Regal truly had everything. His in-ring work was well documented and it's well established that Regal was a gifted pro wrestler during his WWE tenure. But it's Regal's other abilities which fly under the radar. Regal is an unbelievable talker and he has the ability to cut babyface and heel promos with conviction and meaning. Thankfully, Regal is still involved in the wrestling industry as a manager in AEW, so fans are often treated to the verbal skills of the former King of the Ring. Regal also has the ability to deliver comedy at a level that has never been seen before. His mannerisms throughout his time in WWE were second to none and they helped elevate any comedic segment that he was involved in. Regal was the total package and it was unfortunate that WWE never pushed him into the main event picture. Nevertheless, Regal's work is going to be studied for generations to come simply because his impact on the wrestling industry is never going to be diminished. And number 1. Christian Upon WWE's decision to split Edge and Christian in 2001, it was evident that WWE believed that Edge was the star of the duo. Whilst Edge had a ton of potential and went on to reach a legendary status in WWE, Christian had a body of work that is vastly underappreciated. Christian is arguably one of the best in-ring talents of the past two decades and talents such as Randy Orton, AJ Styles and Booker T have all alluded to this in prior interviews. What makes Christian underrated was just how little WWE, well specifically Vince McMahon, valued his work. It's an urban legend that Vince McMahon disliked Christian mainly due to his appearance, so McMahon would never fully commit to a Christian push. When Christian eventually won the title in 2011, his reign didn't even last a full week, and it was clear that McMahon did not see him as a main event level attraction. WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle put it best when he shared his thoughts on Christian during an episode of his podcast.
but there you have it folks, 10 of the most underrated wrestlers in WWE history. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.